Welcome to the demonstration of the European Plate Observing System ICS portal. On the very top, there is overview of 10 different thematic core services, basically 10 different scientific domains within solid air science in Europe, which are providing data, data products and services to the integrated system. In the middle, there is a data access which is redirecting to the main interactive portal. On the very bottom, there are four different links. The first leads us to the transnational access, which is providing overview of infrastructures, providing transnational access within Europe. The next is the administrative database for managing metadata for individual data and data products and the last link is there leading us to the external community portals which are basically the same as the links on the very top and here you can find for each community their own internally developed portals which are providing functionality specific for the thematic community. Now let's have a look on the integrated data portal. Here I will show you how to use a search module. You can either filter it by different keywords or just select from the list of facets we are providing or you can also use the spatial or temporal selection boxes as indicated here. Once you find the service of interest, you can select it by clicking on it. And in case it's a map layer, it's immediately visualized in the map pane. At the same time, you can explore attached details for that specific layer. In the map view, you can also explore the legend or adjust the visibility of layers or the order. Once you find the dataset interesting, you can also pin it by clicking this icon and pin it to your list of selected items. Then it's added to this blue box underneath. You can also download the dataset by clicking this download, but this will download the default configuration of the service. If you are not satisfied with that, you can modify the configuration by clicking the configuration tab and modify the configuration, which is specific for each service. Then you need to click Apply to update the service query, which brings the updated map immediately, as well as the downloadable content. The next feature is for adding the data set to your workspace, for which you actually need to be logged in. Once you do that, you can click this plus folder button and this will add the dataset to your workspace. Here I would like to demonstrate the functionality of the EPOS ICS data portal by following a simple scientific use case, which is investigating available datasets in Alto Tiberina region, which is a near Ford observatory in Italy somewhere in this area. So first have a look on the available data sets. We have results from 10 different thematic uh, groups, scientific domains. And here we can quickly identify the need for observations. So if we open that and now we can navigate, for example, to a map layer, which is this one is showing seismic stations around the taboo area. So once I am satisfied with this data set, I can pin it to my list. It immediately changes the, changes the color and it's pinned in my list. Second item I'm interested, for example, in historical earthquakes. So I will navigate to historical earthquakes for taboo area, FDSN event. So if I select this one, this is loading the 
add quakes in this area. Again, I will just pin it and it's becoming blue in this case. For each service, you can explore the details under the map pane. Details, name, description, attached DOIs, who is the service provider, and so on. Uh, in addition, you can also change the configuration. So here, in this case, we can, for example, change number of earthquakes, which is by default 5,000. We can try to change it to 10,000, which is actually not possible. Okay, we can limit it then to first 100. And click Apply. And the change is immediately applied in the map, as well as the content which is available for download. Which means if we click this download button, then select the format we are interested in, we can download uh, the content. In this case, is a Quake ML format, which is XML flavor. Okay, so here we have the seismic data. We can also explore, um, for example, a map of seismogenic faults in this area. So if I use the free text search, I can type faults and filter the list of results just to um, those who are providing fault information. And if I switch now to seismology, I can find this European database of seismogenic faults provided as WMS layer. So you can see it provides information for the whole area of uh, Southern Europe, but also faults in our area. Again, I'm interested in this data set, so I'll pin it to my list here. Uh, the map map is becoming busy, so what I can also do, I can use this layer control and adjust the layers, for example, transparency. I'm not that interested in the station, so I can hide them or make them less visible or change the order of, uh, of layers. Um, here, I would like to also see the geology so I can use the geology filter and then navigate to geology and see what we have available. Yeah, I'm interested in geological map. So I select the geological map. And as you see, it's being downloaded from the dedicated WMS server and updated. Again, I'm interested in this one, so I will pin it to my list. So I have four different data sets from this area already. Each time I zoom in or out, the, all the queries are actually being executed again, which means it sends the request to the remote server and parse the results back and render them in the view. For many of the services, you can also modify the configuration as I shown before, and also download the content in uh, different formats. Then we have also additional functionality, which is the, the workspace. It's not fully implemented yet, but it pr should provide you more functionality than this simple search tool.